Um, what, um, what I want to, to talk about is this. About a month ago, I was invited to speak to a national conference on markets, and I learned there that people in the market community all over the country are very concerned about what's happening in Birmingham, and I want to set that in some kind of context. Because for too long, councils have seen markets as an embarrassment and a liability, perhaps a site to be sold or an asset for raising money, and not as the heart of the community and the local economy. Markets nationally are a multi-billion pound business. We heard from Keith the statistics on the jobs that, direct, that depend directly on the wholesale market. 1,100 people employed there, 3,000 indirectly involved. But markets, as I think Carl has been saying, define what a place is for. Before you had Birmingham as a centre of production, you had Birmingham as a centre of trade. And that's the most ancient form of trade right across the world. You can see the examples here, and this is a, a very early example of a, an English market. But in the ancient world, in China, in Babylon, in Pompeii, you have the same kind of thing. It's one of the most ancient things that local councils are involved in. The whole service of regulating weights and measures, what we now call trading standards, comes from the experience of markets. When I was researching this the other day, it was so important that, uh, for example, in, in Sicily, a merchant who didn't adhere to the fixed prices in the 17th century could be sent to the galleys for swindling their customers. And it was always seen as absolute guarantee, guarantee of the, uh, the integrity of local business. Now, um, the problem, I think, is that local authorities have come to see markets with a very narrow focus. Markets bring together a lot of the different things councils do. They regulate, they own the property, they, and it's key for the local economy. But too often, it's seen in a very narrow uh, framework simply as an asset that raises money, and if it doesn't raise money, uh, then it's dispensable and the market, uh, the market closes. And it's in that context that I think not only here, but across uh, the whole country, we need to be very worried about the threat to the Birmingham wholesale market. Campaigners have talked about clone towns. Towns in which all the businesses come from a very limited range of national well-known brands. Towns where all the high streets, whatever town you're in, look the same. And what makes a place work is the network of independent, different, locally rooted businesses. And that depends, in turn, on the market structure. What makes towns different or special, what makes people want to come to them, is not the ways in which they're like every other town, but the ways in which they're, uh, they're, they're, they can be different. Behind the independent businesses stand the independent wholesale markets. People are concerned about the domination of the supermarkets. Uh, the reference was made by Carl and previous speakers to the uh, market setting the benchmark for prices, for the uh, market setting the base for affordable food. There's a phrase that's been used uh, about some towns that they are ghost towns. Why? Because the market for food has been confined only to one or two of the big supermarket chains. Without that involvement of the independents, that risk is very much there. I remember once uh, staying at a cottage somewhere in the in middle of England and the, uh, the man who ran the greengrocer's shop in the village describing how he would drive from Oxfordshire to Birmingham early in the morning to get his supplies. Well, you think about the area from which those independent businesses and, uh, and caterers get their supplies. It's not just Birmingham, it's not just the West Midlands, it's much wider. Herefordshire, Shropshire, Keith gave examples from Wales. The survival of a network of independent traders across those areas depends upon the survival of an independent wholesale market here. Without that, 
the only distributors would be the major, uh, the, 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 the major uh, supermarket train, chains. And I think it is naive to think that you can dig up a market and expect it to replant itself on a suburban lorry park and keep those, uh, those networks intact. We've heard from the two traders directly in the, in, in the retail market how important the links between retail and wholesale are. Now, there is, an, uh, there is a wider context to this. Councils have been encouraged. Councils are subject to a great squeeze, and they're squeezing expenditure on markets, and they're milking charges for all their worth. But councils have also been encouraged to play a role in shaping the place. You've heard from Carl how one of the things that made Birmingham what it is, is that market charter in 1166 and the growth of the market from that. We need to put the market, wholesale and retail, at the heart of our community, not at the edge of our community. The market needs to be a source of pride, not a source of embarrassment for the council. Markets are not assets to be stripped or sites to be flogged, at the heart, and as Carl has said, dynamic, bustling, boisterous. I'd like to wish you every success in your campaign. Thank you.